All right. So our tip and trick is really about the methodology and some of the things working as a remote or uh, freelancer will make your life a little easier. Um, and some of the nuances to a Mac OS that allow you to like check an archive, pull a setup and send it without actually opening flame. That uh, can be a, come very handy if you haven't renewed for the month and somebody calls you a month afterward for an archive. So let's jump into it. We'll open up Flame here, which should already be running. There's our command thing. All right, real simple clip. Client sends along. Here's the red pen. We've got to remove all this. Simple enough. And here's the scene. Barely any movement. The only thing they're moving separate from the camera is this guy and maybe this guy's helmet. All right, and that's all that really needed to be happening. So. Let's jump into the batch. We'll notice that uh, here's our source. There we go. All right, so we jump into our batch. Here's our source clip. And what we'll do is we'll double check the uh, red pen up against. We're getting all those pieces covered. Now you notice what I've got going on is uh, the context. I always set up a context between a source and your full res source and the red pen or rough cut up against your HD preview. Um, because you're always going to be sending a client an HD preview or posting for them. And what I tend to do is I'll make them two and three, one and four. So, you know, your fingers aren't trying to traverse from one to nine or something silly, you know, very simple. And what I ended up doing, it was exactly that. I set up one, simple GMAF that did 90% of it, those aren't moving. All the movement for those bad boys are happening in here. There's a planner track that got done for still elements, still meaning they're not moving. The camera's moving, but they're not moving. Everything else there's sitting guy, sitting guy two, antenna restore, because the antenna's got to go back over top of the logo removal here. So we need to have something holding that back there. Right? Now, you'll notice everything's nicely labeled. You know, as a remote artist, take the time and label it, particularly if you're going to send setups off to somebody. That's the whole purpose of it. Plus, even by labeling the little mucks to send into everything, while you're inside of action, you'll see, oh, this is the still frame. Ooh, we still have a mux. What is that mux? Into four. Oh, that's the live action. We could have actually labeled that mux. Let's see if it uh, comes back to us. Yeah. So we'll relabel the mux. <clears throat> cam original. Right. Boom. Cam original. Fine. And you notice I dropped a little compass around my output. Now, particularly on, this is very simple, but on certain jobs, you're going to find that you're going to have the same grouping constantly. Now, this is scene five. Here's Scene 12. Now, say we get all done scene 5, and we're going to make a new one for scene 12. I'm going to pull them out. I could go and reinvent the wheel by doing that whole thing, or take my grouped output, ungroup it, and I'm good. However, you still need to apply the clip data or clip information 
from the source this way, your time code all matches. And it's important to do that, if, particularly if it's going to go back to an offline editor, it's a long form or something. Uh, who, you know, you're handing stuff off to color. You know, having that time code and all that metadata still attached, way important. So, the T, the T is big. Now, okay. Same thing with this. I would go through. I would have a mask. I'd paint up a thing. I'd probably, in this case, eh, I'd probably track a little bit in there because there's some lighting changes and whatnot. But that's a whole nother tamale. So we'd go through. We rendered everything. We have our HD preview, and we have our piece. Sometimes they might want to burn in on the HD preview or not. It's simple enough to do. And it's easy because your time code is going to be identical to your source. Now, you're all done. You, you're going to go do your export. Boom. Today is here. We'll make, we'll make one for... day, one, or year, month, day, so that you would be can read it and computers can read it. Okay. We're going to export our preview. That's not an archive. It's a... All right. We're going to go make our exports. Make a movie, quick time. So this is for your processing. Whatever the Kodak or preferences that the offline editor or whoever is going to want for maybe an HD to go back in the editorial or not, you make a simple set and you're fine. All right, so you're done. You've posted it. It's all good. You're going to move that down in the comps, and off you go. Now, you're going to go into archive. You're going to open up your archive set. Oh, all set. We're going to make sure we've updated our archive. Archive and close. And we're also going to archive setups, close. Okay, so now you're at the point where you are, you've archived, you've exported, now you want to check it somehow. Well, normally, if you open up your Mac, it's going to look like this. You go and look in here. Oh, it looks like there's an archive. There's segments, and you know, you're going to double check the size. Okay, there's 3.5 gigs. That's what it said it would do when it went to do it. Your exports are there from yesterday and today. But how do you know that that archive has got what you want in it? I mean, the time looks right 11 11, 11 11, 11 12. But there is a way to check your archive. You command, shift, period, and it suddenly opens up all the hidden files that are on your Mac. Under op is Autodesk. Under Autodesk is archive. In archive, you're going to find dun, 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 tips and tricks. There's an HTML folder. Now, you could import your ATOC into a... FileMaker Pro or some other type of tab delineated software, Excel, you know, to read, to see what's on there. Uh, me, I prefer to web browse, so I'm going to use the HTML files 
straight up inside of Safari and go, okay, there's comps, here's the piece, there's the segments of the sources, there's the original clip with the red pen, uh, go to batch renders, there's the renders, 89 frames, 89 frames, looks good. All the other elements for the job are in there as well. Let me go through those in a second too. Um, and at least it looks like the archive has everything it's supposed to, including your setups. So here you go, and we'll check the last thing. The last thing archived at 11, 11 was tips and tricks. It's the project setups. So provided they can open it up and they're in the same version of software, it should be fine. But how can you still send just the setup without actually setting the whole archive? Well, in the same Autodesk folder, you're going to find projects. You're going to find your particular project. You'll go and you'll find batch. And inside there will be a flame library. Here's clip 5v01. There's the actual batch. There's the proxy for the batch if you really wanted to do it. And if you are so inclined, you could you could open up and delimit that if you really wanted to. But you find your batch, you'll find flame, you can pull this setup right out. That's going to include all of your pieces. And you'll notice the names of stuff, clean frame one. So it's going to have all those names on things. If you get hit by a bus, someone will be able to make sense of these without you having to explain anything. So there you have the way to check your archive without actually opening it up in flame. It's the old Safari, open, finding your archive for your job, open the HTML folder. It'll tell you the last time something got done and what that was. And you also have the way to pull files out of your project without having to open flame and resave them out or send them a whole archive of the setups. You can know specifically which one you're sending them. Um, any other questions? I find this to be very handy. The command shift period puts you right back in the normal everyday Mac mode and toggle it back and you're in and looking at a whole bunch of the hidden files. Very handy. Remember, you're going to find the Autodesk under Ops.